Okay. Hello and welcome back to Chaos Farm. We are great today with beautiful blue sky, a little bit of cloud, but it's dry and the sun is out and it's just a beautiful, beautiful spring day. So as you can see in the background, we've got kind of different things going on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, and I'm gonna show you because it's actually now a bit easier to see. So in previous shows, I've mentioned about the green manure and how we're trying to put back into the ground um, via planting, so green planting. So down here, you can see some of the places the tractor's gone over, but this here is what we call fusilia. And it's really, really good um, green manure. So basically a plant that we can plant um, that actually puts nitrogen and goodies it back into the soil, um, which then prepares it for potato planting, which is what we're going to go on to in a minute. So this stuff is called fusilia, I think it's called. Um, and it's just a really pretty little leaf. And the idea is that actually we can leave it, obviously the grass has grown up a little bit in between, but we leave it in the ground. And then when we're ready to plant, we then um, plow over it. As you can see in the bed next door, that's all been plowed over. Um, and all the fusilia there has just been, uh, been plowed into the ground because as it decomposes, then it actually, um, it gives back to the soil, so it enriches the soil. So as well as that, we have here, under the green tarpauling, I don't know how easy it's gonna be able to see, I'll pull some of it back. We've got some lovely, lovely compost. Um, and this is what we're putting in to the ground as well, prior to planting the potatoes, so that the potatoes have the best nutrients they can possible in the ground. So this ground here, as you can see, kind of just the other side of the compost, the horses are there. It's only ever really been grazed. Um, it's never, never actually had um, any veggies in it. So this time around, it is a first. So we've got the horses in there just grazing off the excess grass before we plant more. Um, but we're gonna go down and join the team that are planting the potatoes. So we have, from this end, we have Tam, we have Danny, we have Ness and Angel the dog. And Angel's always part of it, so she's, she's got to come on camera. Um, so what are you doing, Tam? Can so, you just explain um, what you're doing? Yeah, so three of us are working as a bit of a team here. Um, and we have, we counted about 125 um, potatoes to, to plant today. So we're going to be planting them along this entire row here and probably along another row, to be honest. Um, and every every spade's width, we're digging a hole, not a very deep hole, and then we're backfilling it with um, compost. And Danny's doing a brilliant demonstration here. So she's mixing um, the compost into the hole um, with not too much grass in there. We'll get it out in a minute. And then what we do is, um, well, Danny can maybe demonstrate what happens next. She just co slightly compresses where the hole was formed. And then Ness comes along, digs a little hole, puts the potato in about four to six inches deep, and then backfills. And then, so this is basically planting Duke of York. Um, they're a first early uh, potato. And so they'll come up first, you know, sort of, they'll be ready about June, July time, I should think. Yeah, they should be ready about then. So we're going to have a lot of potatoes, um, but it's quite a labour intensive process, hence we're working as a team and obviously we've got quite a large area to cover. So so, yeah, I can see the string is right the way down nearly to the end of the, the line. Yes, um. so we, we need to have the string obviously to stop us from going on the wonk. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll plant another line on the, from the other side. So this side here. Yeah, and then we'll have, be able to have a walkway down the middle. Um, which we figured was probably a sensible way of doing it. Or the other thing we could do is we could have companion planting or even, you know, lettuces or something like in that, which are a catch crop, you know, in the middle. So for the non-gardeners of uh, our viewers, how do you know when a potato is ready to plant? Okay, well, um, the potatoes have been doing, a, we've been chitting the potatoes. So chitting. So Ness has um, got oh, one brilliant. here. Thank you, Ness. Um, so chitting is where you, the potatoes have eyes on them. They're called eyes. They're not actually eyes. Um, by the way, top tip, what vegetable has ears? 
<laughs> Come on. Oh, corn. Corn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but potatoes have <laughs> eyes on them, and they're not really eyes, but they're just places where the potato sprouts uh, from. And so you see that this potato is actually sprouted from both ends, sort of thing. So it's got a little sprout here and a little sprout there. So what we do to chit is we place the potato after we've ordered it in the light, and then that encourages that first sprouting to take place which is supposed to help um, advance um, the growing process, bring it on a bit. So, uh, yeah, so we do that. So we chit it first. And when you've got this very nice um, sprout, about an inch long, you know that they're ready to plant into the ground. So can I chip my potatoes from home? Yes. Because I'm just thinking some of my potatoes have gone a little bit yes. past Yes, it. you can. So yeah. rather than throwing them away or composting them, I yeah. can actually put them in like an egg carton yes. in the light and then yes. chip them and plant them. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> and now um, the thing about potatoes, which are, these are, these are called seed potatoes. They're obviously uh, shop-bought potatoes um, from a seed supplier. Um, so we know that they are virus-free. Yeah. Um, we know that they haven't got any fungal diseases or anything like that. Um, we also know a little bit about the Duke of York potato. We know that it's uh, first early. We know um, that it will probably have some blight resistance as well. Um, so obviously blight is an airborne fungal disease which is carried on the wind and uh, potatoes are very susceptible to it, particularly uh, in the southwest. So we know a bit about this um, potato. Obviously the potato which you may pick up, you know, just from your vegetable basket, you don't know as much know. perhaps about yeah. that potato. So there's, there's, a, there's a disadvantage, there's a, yeah. but you know, absolutely they, they can be grown from home just like that. Save on waste. I'm all about saving from Indeed. waste. Indeed, yep, <laughs> absolutely. You can do the same garlic as well, by the way, which is yeah. sprouted. And uh, carrot tops and lettuce and things like that. You put the, the end, like the head, like the tail end, I suppose you call it, in water, in the sunlight, and it will actually grow again, won't it? It's yep. quite clever. I think Indeed. it's quite clever. Um, so carry on, we're just going to watch you a little bit longer, yep. just to kind of see what you're doing. And we might wander down the end to see kind of how much further you've actually got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we've got the sand here and the sand we're mixing in with the compost whenever um, the ground is quite heavy. So it actually adds a little bit of lightness to it. Um, as you can see, some of the, the ground has actually got a bit of a lighter colour. That's where it's dried out already in the sunshine. So if I just dig underneath a little bit, you can see it's a lot darker. I'll get rid of some of this grass, um, but it's a lot darker underneath. If I move out of the light, you can see. And the idea is that underneath the, the surface layer, it's actually quite a bit moister. There's still quite a lot of moisture underneath. And that's, that's good for the potatoes, but if it gets quite heavy, so it gets a, uh, quite clayish I'm guessing you could call it then we put the sand in with it and it just lightens it a bit and it makes it a bit bit lighter and it also adds a bit of salt to the ground as well um because it's sea salt so uh, sea sand sorry so we can see we're moving away from the team and we can still see their great big line of uh of potatoes where the potatoes are going to go So we're coming all the way down here. So this point over here is as far as their string will actually reach. <laughs> so they've got to come here and then there's still some more to go on to the end of the, uh, the plot. So if they're going to be planting 120 potatoes, I think they said, it's going to take up most of this line that they're, they're on at the moment, as well as some of kind of another line which will be closer to us here so there's quite a lot of quite a lot of potatoes going to be happening one thing i didn't ask was how many potatoes you get from one seed potato which would be quite interesting to find out so should we go and just ask tam a minute we're going to come back up this way again Whoop. if i don't fall in the uh, the ditch so there's a quite a big ditch along this side just down here which well it's kind of mid shin deep um, this is actually the furrow of the plow so I know on the old market garden before, I showed you it, but um, this is a bit different over this side. Tam, one thing we forgot to ask yeah. is from one seed potato, yeah. how many potatoes will come from that? So well, how many eating potatoes? Okay, well, it, it, it sort of depends actually on how much care you give them. So oh, okay. if you, if you um, earth up, do a thing called earthing up. So after, so once you've planted your potato, 
what will start to happen is the potato sprout will start to sort of pop through the soil. And so when you see that happening, then what you do is you just put a whole lot more compost on top. And then that helps because um, basically then what you're doing is you're not only feeding the potato, but you're also um, encouraging the depth of planting. And of course then the potato will start to put on more potatoes. So if you do lots of earthing up every single time, um, burying that, that shoot with some more compost, and every single time it comes up, then bury it with a bit more compost, get quite a bit of depth of soil. And that's great because then you can have more tubers per potato plant that you planted. So you're looking about sort of, what, six to 10 potatoes. Okay, yeah? so that's why you see that the potatoes have got like a mound, is it? Because right, people yeah. are earthing them up. Yeah, you, you often see it in agricultural fields, don't yeah. you? And they'll often, they'll, they'll cover the fields with um, plastic. That's as much to warm the soil up as it is to sort of limit the amount of rainfall um, that, the, that will get, get into the soil to make it a little bit drier. Um, and then they'll lift up the plastic and the, and the agricultural fields and you'll see them, yeah, planted in rows. And then a little bit later on, you'll see them in these lovely sort of windrows, if you like, of potatoes. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the way they do it. Yeah. Cool. I, I don't learning. expect, the, well, I don't know. They probably wouldn't do that, that kind of scale of planting though with spades, <laughs> I, would, I would have thought, no. No, probably we're, not. We're a slightly smaller operation than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna leave Tam and Ness to it and find out where Danny's gone. Um, and we will be back after a few songs. See you in a minute. So welcome back. We've come from potatoes over one side of the field and we're over the other side of the field. So we can see the horses are, they're now very quiet. Um, Wilma, who's lying down, has now got up and she's just, I think they're enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> and as you can hear, we've got a very chatty chicken behind. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to just show you <laughs> our very chatty chickens, uh, the quails and the, uh, the turkeys. So at the moment, everybody's talking. At the moment, we've got this, um, our house of quail um, supported with two struts at the front because we've actually had quite a lot of bad weather. Um, and the, <laughs> hello, the hutch has actually been blown over several times. So although it doesn't look very pretty, it actually has got a function um, just to try and keep it up. Because obviously if the wind is blowing it over, then it's gonna damage the hutch, it's gonna damage the chickens um, and the quails as well. So we've got our fox proof fencing down here, which is connected to the mains and it is very, very sharp. Um, so it gives one hell of a kick. Um, and when I say one hell of a kick, I mean, it really, really kicks out. So please be careful when you're going past here. But we've got our poms. So these are our Polish chickens, which um, these two at the front are actually the mums of the one at the back. And we've got another, I think two others in the big chicken run, but these three, because the two at the front have got a bit older, um, they've actually been being beaten up by the other chickens. So we brought them and her, their, well, the, one of their daughters out, um, and they're much, much happier in here, sharing the house with the quails. So the quails are, there's actually two in the hatch, and if you, I'll open the door, and hopefully the chickens don't come out. Come on, chickies. Come back, girls. Come back. Right at the very end, you can actually see them. They hide away really, really well. But they're in here and they're so happy in their little house of quail. So the three quails are actually boys. Um, we thought that we might have uh, one boy and two girls, but they are actually all boys, unfortunately. But they blend in so well um, and they just love to, they love to be in, in hiding. Oh, hello chickies. And one of the chickens is actually, at the moment, pecking the cameraman's foot. <laughs> as soon as we're moving the camera, she's decided she's gonna move. So in next door, you can see there's the turkeys. I'll let you go out again. Um, and next door, I want to tell you a little bit about the turkeys. So this is our first year actually having turkeys. Um, and as you'll know, we actually reared all of these from eggs. So, yes, um, we actually reared them all from eggs. So this big one here at the front, 
with the big tail. That's Cranberry, our turkey boy. Um, we did actually have two boys in here and uh, four girls. Um, but this weekend they've actually started fighting. So you can see on Cranberry at the back of his head, oh, thank you, he's actually got quite a lot of scabby bits, um, which is where they were actually fighting him. So you can see on the side of his head, the back of his head, and actually now on his bottom, he's showing you. Um, ow! <laughs> They're pecking quite hard. So on the end of his tails, you can see there's um, his tail feathers. There's kind of a few bits taken out. And that's actually because they've been fighting. Um, so we have now separated the, the, the two boys and the other girl because this one here in the middle, which is going to peck me again, she's actually quite, um, yes, thank you, quite uh, violent, I would say, actually. She's quite aggressive, this one here. Um, and she was actually attacking the other girl and the, other, the two girls were actually fighting, as were the two boys, which boys you would expect because it's springtime. <laughs> Thank you. They <laughs> just keep pecking me. Um, whereas the girls, we didn't really expect them to, but unfortunately, they they got a little bit like spring is in the air, I suppose. Um, but cranberry, our go away, stop pecking me. The cranberry, the big boy, um, he is he's much more handsome, much more friendly. Um, as you can see, they're now in their bigger enclosure. We are waiting for the order of the fencing to come. Um, as soon as we've got good fencing, the, the bottom of this field where the horses are, the whole of the bottom of the field is going to actually be sectioned off into um, runs for the turkeys, the chickens and the, um, the ducks. So they're going to have bigger spaces, um, which would be so much nicer than actually having them in these. Um, these do the job and they're great for the winter um, just to keep them all safe and kind of secure. But actually what we want to be able to do is open them up so they've got more space, they've got more kind of freedom really. Um, because they're not supposed to be in cages, the birds are supposed to be out. And what we want to do is, although the turkeys we need to be very careful with because they're quite a lot bigger, um, and they will beat everything else up because of their size. So we will separate them off, but actually the idea is that they want to be out and we want to have them as free range as possible really. Um, obviously keeping them safe away from badgers, foxes, dogs, cats, whatever around. Um, I think that uh, a fox would have a bit of trouble trying to catch a turkey, if I'm honest. But what you can see now is actually cranberry. So the boy, his big, like, droopy bit on the end of his beak, that's called a snud. But you can see all of his, um, his bobbly bits at the bottom down here. Cranberry, oh. <laughs> he's going to turn around. They've now gone blue, um, so he changes the colour of them. So when he's trying to um, show off, he changes them from red to blue to kind of like a purple. And it's amazing how different they can be. And what he does, you can hear this sound. Not gonna do it now, are you? That sound, so it's like a sneeze, it's a psh, and it's, he's letting the air out. And it's amazing, because he can turn his tail each different way. And he's basically, he's flirting with the girls, that's what he's doing, so he's showing off. Um, showcasing his brilliance um, and to a certain extent I think he might be showing off to us as well um, because we've had to do some very quick changes to the uh, the enclosure we haven't yet got an, a door on turkey towers um, so we do need to get a door on there but if I, once once we've got a door, then I will go and I'll pick him up. But at the moment, I'm not going to commando crawl underneath the electric fence, I'm afraid. I don't really want to get um, electrified, shall we say. So as you can see, he is, I think he's very handsome. He's ugly, but he's very handsome at the same time. Um, and when the sun catches his feathers, his the goldy ends, um, they're, or the bronze, they're called, because he's a bronze turkey, the, the bronze ends actually shine. Um, so he does look really amazing and obviously he's pluffing his feathers up to flirt with the girls um, and yeah he's just amazing but the amount of noises and vocabulary that they've got they go from the kind of the spitting kind of sneezing that he's doing to uh, to flirt with the girls to gobbles to chirps to whistles to all sorts um, they've got such a big vocabulary and they're so intelligent which I never knew turkeys were before. I just kind of thought turkeys, dinner table kind of food. Um, but these guys aren't. And it's really interesting to see them grow and to see them kind of change and chat. And when I come out in the morning, 
I'd say, hi, tackles. And they go, so they little gobble. Um, and they do chat to me. As soon as I come kind of around the corner, they know. Um, and obviously they've still got their water to, to do at the moment um, because they're drinking a lot at the moment with the, the sun out. Um, so it's, there's a lot we're learning about turkeys compared to chickens. They're a lot different, um, even though they're still a, a fowl, a bird. So yeah, so that's kind of the turkeys. So hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll get some eggs from the turkeys. Um, I don't know kind of how big they're going to be because normally when it's first eggs, they are a lot smaller. Um, so they may not be as big as kind of your natural turkey eggs, I suppose, um, if you're having kind of a grown up eggs, but these guys, we will see. So as soon as we've got them, we will talk about it. Um, and in next week's show, I'll actually show you our Moran eggs. So the Morans that we grew at the same time or hatched at the same time as these guys, they're actually now starting to lay. Um, so we're gonna, I'll show you some of them. We've got, I think maybe 12 or 14 at the moment. Um, so it'll be really exciting to see what they hatch like, um, cause we're gonna put them in an incubator as well. So they should probably be maybe another week to 10 days um, before we actually have enough eggs to incubate them. And then we'll, we'll set them in the incubator um, so it'll be 21 to 27 days thereafter that we get chicks from them, which will be very exciting. So hopefully by that stage, we'll have all the turkeys and chickens will be out free range. Um, we'll then be able to use one of these enclosures for the chicks once they're a little bit bigger um, and go from there. So should be very exciting. I love having chicks around. Um, whether we'll have any turkey chicks in that time, I don't know. <laughs> it might be more towards the end of the summer, but we shall see. So for the minute, I'm going to leave you with Cranberry and his, his lady friends. I think we might bid a hasty retreat from them now because Cranberry's lining up for getting a little bit fruity. So we'll leave it there. What do they say? Never work with children and animals. So we're going to leave it there before Cranberry uh, gets, yeah, before it goes any further. So we will see you next week um, with more eggs and uh, a few different planting surprises. So we'll see you next week.